happiness, happiness, the greatest gift that I possess. I thank the Lord that I've been blessed with more than my share. Hello, everybody. Hello, Year 3. Uh, first of all, a big thank you to everyone who took part in the quiz. Uh, I actually quite enjoyed it, and it was a lot of fun. And it was lovely to see your names pop up and do well. Uh, congratulations to, to those who kind of did really well, and thank you all for taking part in that. Um, secondly, sorry, I just that's, there we go. Um, secondly, Welcome to the sun coming out, as you can see, this lovely picture. Now, there's a good reason why I'm with these cows, but I'm going to set you a challenge. There's, um, you're going to have to come up and tell me why there are, I'm sat here with these wonderful cows. Um, and it's not because they wanted to go to the movies, after all. Um, so, uh, we've got our work for the week. So this week, um, as you know, we're looking at God's own mortals. Um, now, how do we define a God? Now, sometimes a God can be defined as in, obviously, the Lord, God. Uh, we look at mythical gods like the Greeks and the Romans and the Egyptians. But is doing something that's never been done before and changing the way the world is, does that make you a God in some sense? That's a question for uh, another day. But there's a tangent here. There's a reason for this. Um, what I'm going to do with this, so we've got this is that last week on the 14th of May was um, the anniversary of Edward Jenner, Edward Jenner becoming the first British physician to carry out a successful vaccinations. Now you might be hearing quite a lot about vaccinations at the moment and there's good reason for that and that's fine. So um, what I'd like us to do this week is look into that because that would be really interesting for those of us who don't know what a vaccination is to actually look it up and find out what is a vaccine, what is a vaccination. Because, like I say, they're coming up in the news an awful lot. Um, so what we're going to do is, over the next week, we're going to do a load of research and we're going to come up with um, writing our own diary entry of, um, of the first vaccination. So that week. So we're going to be doing lots of research and finding out about things. And then we are going to, we are going to write our own diary entry so so this is a little bit of how the week is going to go first day is i would like you to first of all do research that's what we need to learn it's going to be very hard to write this man's diary entry if you actually haven't got a clue on what a vi vaccine is uh, i made a thing the other day and it's great it does stuff well done and um, that's that's not going to be a very compelling diary entry isn't it so your first day uh, your first job is to find out the five w's of the vaccine and of edward jenner who what why where when and then if you're being cheeky how um find those things out get all your information all your notes down in advance and then that way it'll make it far easier for when you write up your piece then you'll know you'll have all the background things look for any little stories or anything like that that's actually just quite interesting and will add a bit of flavor to your writing and make it a bit more uh interesting i think that would be really good um, now, the other thing, so we got that on our first day. So we're going to do our research. Next, we're going to do our plan. So as usual, where we plan things out, we're going to look at what's going to happen, what's going to happen in the beginning, what's going to happen, what's going to happen by the end. Um, now, I will leave the choice up to you. There are two options on how you can do this. You could either do the diary entry for the week, and that maybe every day he does a little bit of something to help find the vaccine. Or you could do it for the first day with the actual 14th of May, where they discover the vaccine and find out that it works and that it's successful. Because that's very important, the fact that it's successful and not just something that happens um, and not just one that's failed. So day one, we're going to research. Day two, we're going to plan. Day three, we're going to do our first draft. So we're going to do, we're going to write into our um write it up we're going to have our days we're going to write up our first draft now that may take you a little bit of time because i think this is quite a big piece of writing i'm asking you to do so i'm actually going to give you two days to do either your first draft or your second draft however you see fit because um remember you've got uh, quite a big topic so you're going to have done lots of research you're going to have lots of things to put in and you're doing a big diary entry this isn't just 
I went to the park, is it? This is, I discovered the first vaccine. I've created a vaccine. Why does it call it a vaccine? That's a good question. Why did he call it a vaccine? Interesting. So that's, um, that's another little thing. So that shows you. So we're going to have two days to write up our first draft. I think that will be quite important to really spend our time on it and make sure we do a really quality piece of writing. Because as we know, anyone can write, you know, a, a diary entry, but it's about using that quality. Now, we'll go through what the features are in a minute. Um, next up, then once you've done that, so that'll be days three and four, on your final day, you can uh, write it up as a second draft. So like we talked about last week, not just, um, not just using, uh, sorry, my mind's gone back. What did we talk about last week? I'm talking about the second draft, right? Not just looking for your proofreading. Proofreading is a very important job, but it's not the only thing you should be doing. So proofreading is when you are um, correcting spelling mistakes and grammar and little things like that. We're not just doing that. You're looking to one, improve it, improve it with the vocabulary you're using, your sentence structure, all sorts of things like that, but also improve your content. And sometimes remember, not always adding. When you're editing, you're not always adding. Sometimes you're taking away, and that's just as useful. Um, you know, I've, I listened to a, an audio book recently, and there was like a, a talk with the author at the end of it, and he said how, how sometimes how they took chapters out because it made the story better, but actually it didn't slow it down. So sometimes think about maybe you might want to take a piece out, and that's fine. That's fine as long as you can justify it and you can say, no, my writing is better without this because... That's really good. Um, so there we go. We've got day one, do our research, look up who Edward Jenner is, look up what a vaccine is, how did he discover it, why did he find it, why was it needed? These five W's and the how. Um, why is it called a vaccine? I think that would be a really interesting one because actually I don't know that. I've never really thought about it until now, but I'm sure if we were in a classroom right now, you'd be saying to me, sir, why is it called a vaccine? And I'd be going, that is a fantastic question. Lovely. Um, so now that we've spoken, oh yeah, sorry. So that's uh, research, day two, plan. Always important to plan to get ideas down because once you've got those ideas on paper, you can then mold them into something. You can change them, you can do whatever you like. But until they're down on paper, it's gonna be really hard to think about everything that you've got to write. Uh, day three and four, first draft. Take your time, write a really good piece of writing. I know it's tempting to literally spend 20 minutes or something writing very quickly just to get it out of the way, but I think there'd be a load of value in having this. This would be something really interesting to learn about um, and find out. Um, and I think that would be really good if you could spend that time to really work on your writing. Um, if you would prefer to write your first draft up really quickly and really roughly and then spend the time on your second draft making it really super, I'm also fine with that. If you want to take two days for that, that's up to you. I think that's a great idea. As long as you're taking the time in your writing, I really don't have a problem. Uh, and then day five, second draft, finish it off, make it nice. Um, I think that's going to be a really lovely piece of writing and you're going to learn a lot from it. And I'm going to learn a lot when I finally get to read them, which will be really cool. Um, so how do we write a diary entry? That is a very fair point. Now, we've done a few in school and we went through that that period where kind of um, our RRE was getting very heavily involved with our diary entry. So um, what are the features? First of all, really important, two very, very, very important things. And I'm sure you'll be shouting them at home to me. First person. What is first person? Well, first person is using the words I, me, um, I'm, words like that. Making sure we're talking about ourselves. I am on my phone. Uh, <laughs> there is a phone there, I promise. <laughs> I am on my computer. I have got my headset on. All of these things. I, I went to the shops. I discovered the first vaccine making sure we're using that first person and making sure the other thing not slipping out of that first person, not going suddenly, uh, and then he did this. No, you are Edward Jenner. You are Edward Jenner. You need to remember that. Second of all, chronological order. We talked about Kronos, one of the titans in Greek mythology, who um, is Father Time, Time Chrono, Time. 
uh, chrono break is a special thing. I'll tell you, okay, I'll go on a tangent with my esports. There's something called a chrono break. And with the chrono break, it means that they can change the time in the game um, when necessary. So chrono time, chronological order, making sure your work is in time order. So if you're starting on the 11th of May, your next day isn't going to be the 14th of May. And then after that, you'll go to the 13th of May and then the 5th of May. It needs to be in the correct time order. Also, how he's done that is you need to look at the order of how he's doing things. Your first entry, if he discovers a vaccine, well, afterwards, he can't be saying, oh, I'm really stuck. I don't know what to do with this. So um, he needs to, his actions need to be in order as well. As in, if you were cooking some cakes, you wouldn't start off with, oh, I've I took them out of the oven and then I mixed the batter. It wouldn't make any sense. Um, once we've got the chronological order, it's also in the past tense. That means they've already done it. This is a diary entry. Therefore, every day has already happened for him. And in your writing, it means that every day will have happened and that it will be writing in the past tense. Um, lots of the suffix ed, for example. Um, I washed my hands. Not I am washing my hands because it has all already happened. Um, the only exception is obviously is if you explain to us what you're doing. So for instance, tomorrow I am going to be uh, washing my feet to see if that's as effective. That's fine because you've given us the context that actually he is talking about the future. But for almost all of your diary entry, it should be in the past tense. Um, the other thing, obviously, detailed descriptions. We want really, really good descriptions in there. We want great words, great descriptive words. Think about who's writing it. Think about the kind of words he would have done. I know that we've spoken that in um, a diary entry, you can, you can use colloquial language more because you, you're talking to yourself, essentially. But remember, in this diary entry, you're Edward Jenner. I don't think that Edward Jenner would have said bravo fam. So... Um, I would avoid those words, but detailed descriptions. Maybe if you find out, if you learn about a really interesting scientific device, um, use that. Use that and describe what it looks like. Describe what he did with it. If there's something really funny that happens, describe it. Use those detailed words. I don't really want to see happy or sad or, you know, fine or really good words. You've got no excuses. You've got the power of the internet with you now. You can quite easily go and look for a synonym for happy and make it really good. Um, other thing, self-reflection. He needs to think about himself. He needs to think about what he's doing. It may be, what if he gets it wrong? What if this vaccine doesn't work? It could be a really big problem. He could let loads of people down. How's he feeling about that? Um, so I think these are all really important things. Um, obviously, you've got this video here. If you need any help, um, then either, what can I say? I'll, obviously I'll call up, I'm gonna, unfortunately I won't be able to call up on Wednesday this week. Um, so I'll try and call up on Thursday. Might try tomorrow as well, we'll see how, how things go. Um, there's loads of resources out there that are really easy to get. If you need help with the features of a diary entry, type it in, Google it, it's all there. Um, now obviously it's not as good as having your wonderful teacher in class of you, but uh, it's, it's the next best thing. Um, what could be a good prize? I tell you what, if someone can come up with a good prize, uh, I've got lots of stickers. I'm trying to think of a really good prize. Um, right, when we come back, you get free, the first person who can tell me, um, in fact, if you're writing, I got it, I got it, great prize. If you're writing has the reason why this cow is here, in it once we come back you will have a free go in the bag attacked so very exciting prize there um another news thank you very much for your work on reading plus i've been able to log in and have a look at that and thank you very much for your work on my maths now i can see that not everyone's doing my maths i think it would be i honestly it's a really good thing i know there are some people who struggled a little bit with some of the questions that were set therefore what i could do this week is i found those people and i went right i'd like you to do this and this as well um, there's loads of really good things. If you've got a problem getting into it, please feel free to um, contact the school and they'll probably send you over to me and I can help you with that. If you can't find your password or whatever, they were all emailed out to you, um, but 
things happen so we can always try and find those again for you it's really not very difficult so please make sure you're doing my maths because i think it's a really good resource and it's fun honestly um it's fun and i know uh, some children are really enjoying it so thank you very much for your hard work uh, i look forward to calling you this week on friday there will be another quiz um uh, if you've got any pardon me if you've got any suggestions, feel free to, uh, when I call up, to tell me. Or, um, yeah, that's the easiest way, just tell me. Or tweet us at Holy Year 3. And I will happily try and include those in the quiz. Um, but, yeah, we'll do another quiz Friday, 2 o'clock. It was a lot of fun. And hopefully I'll see you there. Have a wonderful week. And I am really excited to find out all you learned now. Uh, but I possess. I thank the Lord that I've been blessed. With more than my share of happiness Happiness is a field of grain Turning its face